and we are ready to go. Welcome back. Stream number three. The redo. We are back. <laughs> At a different time. This is, this is the 12 o'clock version, because the 10 o'clock version... Uh, <laughs> Technical difficulties. Just some technical difficulties. I mean, it was good, but we felt like this one, at 12 o'clock, we were like, you know what? We can make it that much better. It'll be so much better if you can hear us, we thought. Yeah. I mean, so, we had a talk. Sean's no longer going to mute me. It's okay. <laughs> I might have <laughs> might have hit a button, and you couldn't hear Todd for 30 minutes. <laughs> and since mainly the video was Todd talking... About 32 minutes of the 35 minutes, we decided we probably should redo that. <clears throat> probably probably should fix it. <laughs> it was the greatest 32 minutes of streaming I think the world had ever seen, so I'm really sorry about it. Yeah, it was pretty good, pretty good. Um, but trust us, this, one, this one's going to be even better. So, stream number three, uh, I'm Sean McComber, that's Todd Fector. I gave a thumbs up. Oh, it did. The thumb actually did go to this screen back over here where your face is. So uh, it didn't go to, hold on, let's see this. <laughs> there. The secret location I'm hiding in? No, now my thumb is pointing to your to your uh, screen, so it works. Uh, oh. <clears throat> all right. So today, what are we doing today? Oh, we're back, by the way. Uh, we did not have a uh, stream last week because a little thing happened uh, there was just a tad bit of weather, uh, a couple of flakes of snow, and power went out for just about, was it a minute, or was it three days? I can't remember. Uh, I think it was three days on my end. <laughs> three days for Todd. Uh, so yes, we're back, we're live, hope you're all doing well if you're, if you were in Texas. <clears throat> it's t-shirt weather now in Texas, uh, it's hot. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So today, what are we doing today? Uh, boxers and briefs, uh, going through the, some of the process. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, story and a little bit about backgrounds. So this is Todd time today. Uh, Todd is the background extraordinaire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't say that. Yes. That's not true. Uh, I would say extraordinaire when I, b between the two of us. So one of us has to be it, right? One of us is here. Okay. One of us is down here. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I think I think that is about it, right? Uh, yeah. I don't know. If you uh, haven't subscribed, subscribe. Hit the like button. Uh, I don't know that there will be anyone viewing since we're doing it at a weird time. Uh, though, to be fair, I don't know that anyone views it at our regular time, too. So at least not live. Uh, <laughs> so, so, you know, nothing's changed on that front. Nothing's nope. changed. Um, yeah, so I think we're ready to go then. Uh, so I'm going to switch it over. Todd's going to show you some awesome stuff. I'll still be here to, uh, throw in, uh, you know, some witty comments and jokes as, as we, <laughs> as we go. That's, that's, that's all we need from you. The witty comments and jokes. I didn't say they'd be good jokes. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> All righty, and here we go. Transitioning in three, two, one. All right, and I'm going to transition over into Photoshop. Um, so what I want to talk about today, um, and Sean's going to chime in on a lot of this with me, is uh, boxers and briefs. And we've talked a little bit about kind of what this series is going to be all about. And just to recap, or if you're if you're kind of new and jumping into this, basically what we're cr trying to create is a series of shorts about these two characters, boxers and briefs, and they're about one minute long. And over the last two weeks, uh, we've talked a little bit about some of the process that we're trying to go through in terms of story. And today, I really wanted to show more of that process in terms of how are we developing this very first episode? What are the steps that we've taken? Um, because with this first episode, too, it's not just about this one episode. It's about setting things up and setting up kind of standards and practices for the entirety of the show. Um, so if you remember, we have boxers and briefs. And the idea for this very first episode is that they are going to go to a store and they are going to buy a pair of underwear that basically becomes their identity. So um, right now, boxers obviously is easy to tell because it has his nice little boxer shorts on. Briefs is easy to tell. Um, but we wanted to give kind of a, a backstory to the characters and introduce them in a way where uh, it's very clear kind of how they chose to become these characters, boxers and briefs, in terms of what they're wearing. So anyways, um, 
the first thing we we'll talk about is a little bit of the story and kind of where the story came from. So the first thing we have to do with all these episodes is figure out what's it about. Um, so in the case of our episodic structure, it basically comes down to three components. And the first is going to be the setup, where we introduce whatever that episode is about. And there's going to be the second part is the decision, um, or I guess later on we can call it something else. In this episode, it's more of a decision, so we'll stick with that. But um, it's where they're grappling with whatever this newfound thing is uh, and trying to figure it out. And then there's going to be some sort of resolution as the third part, um, where either they're successful with something or they kind of move on and they're happy about something or they gain some kind of skill, something like that. Um, and that'll be the end of the episode. So in the term, in terms of this first episode, basically like we talked about is that boxers and briefs are going to go to buy new underwear. And the way the story came about was, was really just Sean and I sitting around in his office um, over the course of a day <clears throat> and just kind of throwing stuff back and forth in terms of what do we do with these characters? There was no backstory like we talked about earlier. It was just artwork on a wall. Um, and how do we introduce them in kind of the tone of the entire show to the audience? And one of the ideas that we came up with was wouldn't it be funny if we actually saw them buying their underwear, which becomes their identity or the kind of like their names for the show. So that is the setup for this episode is that they're going to go to the store to buy new underwear. Um, the decision is they're going to have to choose whether they're boxers or briefs. Um, and we'll show kind of what that means as we go through some of these boards I want to kind of run through here in a minute. Uh, the resolution is they're going to complete their purchase and they gain their identities and they're happy about it. And from that point forward, they're identified as boxers and briefs. Uh, and the audience then can, can feel good about that. And we'll jump into uh, future episodes where they're just doing funny things and we already know who they are. So let's talk a little bit about process. So um, I'm a big fan of working really rough and really kind of quickly. Um, so when I sketch stuff out, it tends to be pretty pretty sketchy and kind of dirty looking in terms of not really clean lines, very fast. I, I try to think through things quickly before I put too much time into anything. So um, what I want to show you here on the Photoshop screen is basically I just scanned in some of these images. You can see kind of my little pencil sketches here, uh, pencil and pen, really tiny little kind of one by two sketches that I do for my little thumbnails. Um, and this process is called storyboarding. And for those of you who aren't familiar with animation, um, anytime you go off and you create some kind of animated uh, short or a film, um, storyboarding is usually the very beginning of that process once you have an overall, if you have a script, we don't have a script for this, we have a story idea. So we're just jumping right into the boards to lay out things like composition um, and to start to get a sense for where you can place the camera. What are we gonna see? What aren't we gonna see? What kind of requirements are we gonna have of backgrounds? Um, it's going to help us do our background layouts, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes. So what I thought I would do is run you through an early pass of some of these thumb boards and kind of show you what we were thinking. So initially, um, we're going to start off up here where we've got this little city scene and we've got a little kind of sale sign here and you've got two doors. And if you remember back to the first episode, I think it was, we showed a background example. We were trying to kind of just get a general sense of the look. They had two doors, uh, one door for boxers, one door for briefs. And the characters going to choose which door they're going through. So that's the basic setup. So we're at a bus stop. So this would be a bus sign. This bus is going to pull up. Maybe you hear some angry people on the bus saying, get off the bus. What's wrong with you? And the bus kind of peels off. And as it peels off, we cut in closer. And then we see the back of Boxers and Briefs' head. And they're kind of running towards the store. Uh, we kind of follow them in. And all of a sudden, we're going to pull back to reveal it's an underwear store. Um, these little arrows represent kind of we're going to start our framing inside of here. And then we're going to pull back to this larger framing. Um, and then we have them in the moment. So down here, I don't know if this would be easier if I used a, uh, my pen here. Probably not, so I'm just going to skip over it. Um, we've got this down here where they're kind of staring up at this sign. I thought if we cut in close on that sign, this is going to show the audience exactly where we are. It's the grand opening of the store. It's a brand new store, which is why they're so excited to get there. Um, and then it's going to kind of, the camera's going to move down. And they're going to go past this sign that says boxers and briefs that have these little arrows. And we're going to see these little doors. There's going to be pairs of underwear in the window. It's all laid out right in front of them. Um, and they're going to look at it and they're a little bit dumbfounded and confused because, again, they showed up and maybe they thought, oh, we're just going to go into the store and get underwear. They didn't know there was two types to choose from. They didn't know they'd have these choices. Um, or at least that's the general idea that we're trying to run with right here in this particular board. So what happens when you're going through this process is you start to do alternative takes on things. So that was one way to approach it. And as I work through my process, what I like to do is come up with all these other variations and do the same thing for each variation and then kind of judge them on the, their own merits based on what I think tells the story the best or what's the most efficient. Um, 
So kind of building off of what was in that last little section there, what if we actually saw boxers in briefs after they get off the bus, they run towards the camera and they go, and they screech to a stop and we see them and their eyes are huge. They're super happy, happy, happy. We cut to this sign, it says undies grand opening. We start in really close on it and then the camera kind of comes down and pulls out to reveal the two signs, the underwear. And again, they're hit with this choice and they're kind of confused by it. Um, they're not quite sure what they want. And then you get down here to the bottom and you can see where I'm starting to play with ideas of, okay, well maybe the camera can actually be representational of their thought process. So here what I'm toying with is like, maybe they're looking at the briefs and all of a sudden they go up to the brief sign and then back down. And then maybe over here to boxers and they go up to the boxer sign and then back down. And maybe they're going all over the place. Um, but it kind of gives the the viewers an end to their thought process. And, and these characters are not bright, <laughs> so I don't know their thought process is that much in terms of like how much is actually being processed. Um, but it does show that they're kind of looking at these things and trying to figure out what's going on. So then we can cut back to them and they're kind of, again, still confused. They're not quite sure exactly how to handle this choice. So this gets us to the crux of what I think a lot of the series is going to be. And you can jump in here too, Sean, if I'm, if I'm incorrect or if you have other things to say on this. But a lot of what these shows are going to end up being is probably just the two characters standing around doing stuff in a space. Um, for this first episode, again, because we're trying to place them at the underwear store, it's important that we know it's an underwear store. Um, so the backgrounds are going to indicate all of that. But there may be other cases where they're just standing in front of a background that's non-distinct. Maybe it's just a wash of color or something like that. In the case of this episode, my thought was we get them into this. So we've already kind of set up the idea that they have to make a choice between the boxers or briefs. We get them into here and now they start doing all kinds of crazy gags. And this is where we can just play. Uh, and Sean and I are just going to come up with a bunch of different ideas of what they could possibly be doing. I have a couple just here already. They're not well thought out. They're just kind of just spur of the moment. Let's see what we could do where, you know, one character is kind of putting on his pair and kind of like trying them out and kind of spinning around, kind of modeling them. Um, I thought it would be funny if they're doing calisthenics and they're down and they're up trying to see if it's flexible enough, if they're comfortable enough. Um, Sean, another thing I thought would be really funny is if, like, for instance, briefs, you know, fakes like he's – pretends like he's putting on a pair of briefs and puts one leg through, the other leg through, pulls the elastic waistband out and then goes whoosh, and it, like, snaps in on him. And instead of having it on there because they're imaginary at this point, but his waist would cinch in um, almost like it was real. Um, right. Kind of playing with that exaggeration of, of reality, right, that these guys can actually do – you know, impossible things, uh, just leveraging the power of animation. Yeah, the original uh, kind of idea, and not saying that it was a great idea, but the original idea that I had for these, most of these shorts, was these two characters just interacting in a void. Uh, if you go back and look at the that example of purple and brown, that's really all that is, right? It's just two, two characters uh, who are just doing whatever, and literally a white background. Yeah. Um, now, probably didn't want it to be as simple as that and certainly didn't want to uh, just copy off of that. Um, but that's the idea because it's a one-minute uh, you know, one minute short. There, there's not a whole lot that you want to have to set up and, and try to tell a detailed story. Um, and I think, I think we've found a good balance, uh, at least right now, with where we're going of it's not in a total void. You know, we're, we're at a store. We have kind of a, the idea of a... A little town or whatever and they're going to interact with with what's going on there but it's still about the two of the characters and and, right. and their interactions together so uh you know that is one of the challenges um that you kind of run into in doing a one minute short what can you actually do in one minute um how can you you don't you don't want to have too much setup uh you want to be in and out quick funny that's kind of what we're what we're what we're aiming for here yeah and and we can touch more on that uh too here in a minute we can talk about some of the initial ideas that we had that were a little bit too long-winded and let me I'll, I'll run through the rest of this and then maybe we can hit on that for just a minute and yeah. kind of talk about how we pared it down um so we've got them kind of trying stuff out kind of doing their gags and all of a sudden they're going to come to a decision maybe they shake hands or they kind of do something to acknowledge yeah, yeah we're doing that and my thought was that they would cross over in pads. So uh, so boxers, in this case, would walk this way. Brees is going to walk this way. They cross over, and they each go into their the door that's related to the underwear that they've chosen. They go inside, maybe hear a cast register, you hear some rustling or some noise, something like that. A couple seconds later, they emerge. They've got their little bags. They're super, super happy. They've got their new underwear. And then they walk off, and they go on their way. 
Um, and there's one more little gag in here that I think uh, would be, I think Sean, I think is pretty hilarious and kind of ridiculous, but we're not going to ruin that just yet. Um, so we're not going to kind of go into all the details, but this is the basic process for that. So I would do this process probably three, four, five times until I've worked through as many ideas as I can um, to try to have different ways to tell the same story. So what's awesome about this process and the reason I love this process is because it's super challenging. It's like a puzzle. You would think that telling like a one minute little short is pretty easy. You just go in there, it's one minute, it's not long. But um, just within doing this little exercise of the storyboards, we came across an issue. So when we were going back, if I go back to this initial setup here, we had the store. Let's say this is the store right here, and we've got the little si sandwich board sign that says sale on it, something like that. They kind of pull up. They jump off. All of a sudden, they see this sign that says undies, <clears throat> excuse me, and they see the underwear down below. But why wouldn't they just go buy whatever they wanted? Why couldn't they buy both buy boxers and briefs? Um, well, for the show's sake, we don't really want them to switch, right? We want boxers to be boxers and briefs as briefs, and we don't want them switching and wearing different types of underwear. It's, it's going to be set after this episode. So to me, there was a hole. Um, something wasn't working in terms of the story, and that's that they weren't confronted with a decision. They happened to choose whether they were boxers or briefs. So what happened is a little bit roundabout is as I'm working through these, my mind sometimes starts to slip into design mode, and I did a rough. Uh, and this rough is actually really tiny. I have the uh, the original little drawing right here. Um, not very big. You know, it's only a couple inches big because I like to just draw really small. Most of the time I'm not at home when I'm doing this. I'm at soccer practice or I'm at some other off-site something or other with my kids or something. So um, they tend to be really loose, really small. But I did this rough of the store. And if you remember, the in the first... Uh, first uh, stream that we did, I showed an example that had two doors next to each other. It was boxers and briefs, and it was, it was very, very flat. And I wanted to try to get away from some of that flatness, even though the UPA style is predominantly very flat feeling. Even when there's perspective, it still feels skewed and kind of flattened out. So the idea here was this is a little bit more uh, interesting to look at, where we could start on this sign that would say underwear. We'd come down this way. I've got a boxer sign over here. I've got a brief sign over here. I've still got the windows set up. And I had this idea for the sandwich board, and it, was, uh, it would say sale or something on it. So it was like this grand opening sale. Well, once the problem of the decision started to come about, I started to think through ideas. And it was kind of already there right in front of my face, um, again, which is why I love this process, is that as I was thinking about it, I've already kind of been drawing this for some reason. I'm like, oh, wait a second, wait a second. Um, what if this actually said, you know, it was a certain type of sale that was buy one, get one. So I'm going to hide this again. Let's come back down here. So the idea I came up with to kind of get around and to, to kind of really put that question of what are you going to be, you can only get one, was to have a buy one, get one sign. And I tried the idea of having some balloons maybe attached to this buy one that's been stuck onto the sandwich board sign. And there's a little bit of a breeze or a wind. And you can see here it's going to peel that buy one off, which leaves on the sign get one. So these characters are not bright, right? They're not they're they're funny they're kind of happy-go-lucky but they're not necessarily the brightest characters so when they see this it basically tells them you can only get one pair right it's either going to be boxers or briefs and to me that started to solve the problem of they couldn't decide to get both or everything or whatever they, they and they misinterpret it too which fits the character um, where we already know because it's going to say buy one get one we kind of understand what it is but they have no clue um, so I don't know I don't know what you think Sean but I think that that kind of cracked that decision process and also kind of showed who how the characters think about things and how they approach things. Yeah, I think it was a good way to get into the story to force them to make a decision. It's uh, again, I think it's clever. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, I think it I think it works. So the whole the whole opening that you have now that you've come up with, I think it's, is, is really successful for what we're trying to do uh, versus the last one. Well, yeah, and, and we can talk about the initial idea. And like I said, it was Sean and I kind of sitting around and spitballing ideas um, using our shorthand. Because again, we're not going to be showing this to anybody else. It's just for us. So we have the benefit of not having to create amazingly clean storyboards. I mean, my little chicken scratch sketches here work fine for communicating back and forth. So we probably won't clean these up very much at all, if at any. <clears throat> so as we were sitting around, the initial idea was, okay, well, maybe there's a bus and the bus pulls up because you keep seeing this bus show up and all this stuff. And it's initially, initially because 
my idea was if a bus kind of pulled up and boxers gets off that bus and then all of a sudden a scooter or something pulls up and then briefs is on that and they're both on opposite ends of the street and they run towards the center which is where the underwear store is and there's a sale going on or a grand opening and they're both trying to get there to get like the first pairs or they're giving something away but you can see all of a sudden how complicated that becomes now i've got all these things i have to set up um, and again we're talking about one minute it needs to be quick and efficient and, and let people know what the idea is right off the bat what what the problem is going to be they're going to be addressing or have to address and then get on to the cool, funny bat, the the bits, the gags. Um, so that's kind of where we started. Uh, and I, I, I much prefer the shortened version, Sean. <laughs> I think it just works better. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I think we always kind of uh, you and I when I say we, uh, you and I always favor getting into we we like something that's short and quick and to the point, and. And again, not that the the other ideas that we had uh, were, were bad at all. Uh, I think we could have made them really funny, and I think they would have worked, and, and all that. It would have just been longer, and it's longer than what we wanted to do originally or what we have, the intent that we have. So right. this helps. This new idea definitely, definitely helps. And I'm going to be showing you guys the uh, – <clears throat> so we actually put some of this to a test, and I made a short little story reel or an animatic of just this beginning part. I want to show you some of the – even still, once we get these ideas in the storyboard fashion, um, once you start to play with them in a timed environment, like After Effects or, or Premiere or something that's going to be timed out over, where you can see it play out real time, um, you start to see what works and what doesn't. I'm going to get to that in a few minutes. But first, let me talk about some of the design that we've been doing. So like I said, this was the rough that I sketched out. And this was based on those initial thumb boards um, in terms of what I thought the background would have to be. The idea for this particular episode is we're really only going to have one real background, um, and that's going to be this building. And there's going to be other stuff that we have to paint up, but it's going to be pretty simplified. And again, going back to that UPA styling, where you only really show what's important for that particular shot. So you're not going to see highly detailed, highly painted stuff all over the place. It's kind of showing things only when it's relevant to what's going on in the, in the, in the film. So with this initial sketch, I went through and I did another version inside of Photoshop where I cleaned it up just a little bit. This is still super, super sketchy. Um, and it's a little bit oversaturated here still. It should be a little bit less saturated than what it is or what it's displaying like anyways. Um, but if you get in a little bit closer to this, you can start to see playing with uh, things like the thicknesses of the lines and the line quality. So when working through this process, me anyways, I tend to like really sketchy stuff. And I like my sketches better than I ever like my finished works. And I don't know what it is about it, but I feel like the sketchy stuff has a life to it. And sometimes that life gets stripped out of it. Um, but in the case of this, putting these characters on top, I like what the feel that's going on back here. The feel feels right. But these characters don't look like they belong. Um, they're too clean. Um, they don't feel as sketchy. They feel a little bit too precise. Um, and that was one of the things that first popped out is, okay, well, how are we going to balance that? But having said that, let's talk about some of the things here that we're trying to play with in terms of the look, that UPA look, the, uh, inspector look that we're going for. And you can see just experimenting things with like here on these signs, making them pop and pulling them forward, um, by lightening the area that's around them just a little bit. Um, and looking, pulling up some examples here. Um, and these are examples, again, from the Inspector Show. You can really start to see how they were handling that with some of these backgrounds, where you almost have these shapes of color. So in this case, this blue sky is really kind of pulling this building forward, so it doesn't completely flatten out. So they're using color for separation purposes. And here they've got this kind of striation or this painted line that's coming through to kind of, it's not really a gradient, but it's acting almost as a gradient to blend between different shades and different tones. Same thing over here, they're hitting this and then with this darker kind of green. And there's some splotching down here. And they're also using things like cross hatching in, in certain spots. But that's what they're using to kind of separate their forms and to separate space, even though it still feels very flat. Here they're using that same technique to add some kind of texture to the sand. Um, so just those random lines. And the thing I like about it is it doesn't really conform to anything, they're just there. Um, whereas here in the sun, they're also using these lines coming out and they're, they're kind of using these really kind of hatchy lines to make it feel like the sun is radiating those rays. Uh, and then lastly, down here at the bottom, another example of how like on these windows, for instance, let me zoom in just a little bit. 
on these windows, they're coming down and they don't even finish the drawing. They just kind of taper off and the color tapers off. So it feels like maybe there's some plants. It's un, it's undefined. Um, using some of this purple to hint at some shadowing that's happening inside of there. Um, and then same thing back here. You could imagine this might be like trees or something else back behind it, but that's how they're breaking things up. So what I really needed to start to do was to figure out what are the rules going to be that we're going to be creating kind of these backgrounds from. So if I go back to this, for instance, you can start to see here that actually let me set this to something like this. I have an overall shape and through that shape, I'm starting to cut through using some of these lines. And one of the big parts of this is trying to identify the brushes um, that we wanted to use. Uh, and I was going through and trying just about every brush inside of the Kyle Mega Pack. Um, and identifying things and as I did I'd kind of pull those off to the side and then go and experiment further so this is by no way no way a finished piece this is just an experiment trying to get at some of those things that we were just talking about it still needs a lot of work but it has the feel and it has that kind of old school kind of tactileness to it that I think we're looking for in terms of the look of the show so another thing that came up though, and again, this is the fun for me anyways, this is the most fun part, is kind of experimenting with all these things and seeing what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. We talked about these characters not really fitting in. Well, part of that's going to be maybe having to take down the thickness of some of these lines, uh, maybe make it feel like right now it feels if it was drawn out, it was maybe drawn out in an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Now I may wanna shrink that a little bit and say maybe it was drawn on a four by six piece of paper. Um, which is going to make you feel like it's drawn smaller and it's going to add some of that into it but It's going to make my strokes a little bit smaller when I get closer to it though. It's going to have more of that broken up feel But looking at the character specifically um, We started talking with Sean about how can we play with the With the uh, overall kind of outline quality of the character to make it fit This is what we had originally and again these were just pieces of artwork that were up on Sean's bulletin board um, so they weren't really ever incorporated into a background, let's say. They were just standalone characters in front of a swatch of like this beige color um, that were really cool. But now that we're integrating them into things, we're finding things that we need to tweak um, to make them fit. So what I wanted to play with here was kind of thickening out those outer lines and also giving them a bit of that rough quality. If I zoom in on this, you can see here, I hope you guys can see, that some of these lines aren't solid. They have like a little bit of opacity to them and they have break to them. So they have a little bit of, of, uh, of a uh, alpha channel kind of feel to it. Um, but if I look across these, I really like this 3X thick outer rough here because it starts to feel like the outside is really nice and thick. The interior lines are a little bit thinner. Even the fur on the body is using that kind of broken line where it feels like it was sketched by a pencil or it was sketched by a, a a pen or a Xerox and it didn't quite Xerox everything. I'm um, again going back to that old school animation feel. Um, and what was nice about this, um, well first I showed them, to sh the way it usually works is if I do something, I'm gonna text to Sean an image or something I'm like, hey, what about this? And it's usually comes back like, yeah, or let's try this or let's try that. Um, so I showed this to Sean, he seemed to like what was going on with it. And then what I did was I also went back into that sketch that I had for the environment and did a more cleaned up version. So this is still using all the roughed out color and everything else from the original one. Um, because the point of this particular environment, even though I may finish this out and it may become the final uh, background at some point after I clean it up a ton and add some more things to it, is looking at the line quality. So if I zoom in here and you look at the line here, now it feels like, again, this still feels out of place. It feels too clean. But look at the difference between this guy and this where the lines feel like they belong. And he's got this halo kind of around him because I just did a really quick magic uh, lasso tool and ripped him out of the image he was in and popped him in here. Uh, but it's already feeling better. Um, the other thing too, Sean, that I was looking at was like details, like this has this really thin line with like this green on it. And I was playing with, you know, do we need to have all these details? Does it work better if we just have lines on there? So that's stuff that we can play with. And again, that might just come from how close to camera are they? Right? When we're I think really close on them, we can have those details. When not, it actually feels better to drop some of those, and then all of a sudden, it, it's more simplified. Yeah, when you're far away, you're going to lose that de detail anyways. You won't, you won't uh, ever see the, the green color that's on the inside of his, his uh, yeah. underwear. Yeah. Well, and the other thing, too, that we're playing with here is, and this is something else I brought up, it was... We're using a predominantly green background here. And again, some of that's just because I like the way it looked in some of those examples that we were pulling up. 
Um, and again, on my monitor, it's way less saturated than it is in what's coming through right now. So it'll be a little bit more desaturated. So the characters pop. Um, but looking at their color choices, if we have a lot of purple and a lot of green, we may end up changing the color of the, the waistband and the socks and things like that. And a lot of that's just going to be determined by, you know, what looks good on top of like the types of backgrounds that we're going to be doing. So um, the nice thing about this episode is that it's going to have a, uh, I don't know, a more detailed background like this. And that's also going to have some of those backgrounds that are basically just a wash. So we get a little bit of everything. So I think Sean mentioned this already, but this is kind of like a trial where we're kind of throwing everything in the kitchen sink at the, the overall look and the aesthetic to figure out what works best across all these different types of things that we know we're going to be doing. Yeah, and these characters were designed over a decade ago. So, you know, they had a, they had a clean look at the time. And then I think uh, they didn't even have color at that time. I think I just threw, threw some colors on there. Uh, but again, that was, I think when I put colors on there, they were probably eight years ago, nine years ago. Uh, so yeah, so we'll have to do some tweaking and, and part of that is what Chad just showed you with those lines, just to make them fit with the show. Cause I think with the image that we showed maybe, uh, in the first or second, uh, episode, the characters definitely stood out. They didn't fit. Uh, you could look at the image right now with, uh, with boxers. He doesn't fit in the environment. So that's one of the things that we need to make sure we do. Yeah. Uh, it's a, that's one of the challenges, right, Of uh, or the hurdles that we're trying to do is get the – we like the background. We like that style. Uh, now let's let's adjust those characters so that they fit in our world that we're creating. Um, and, th yeah, that could, that could mean we need to change some of the colors and everything too. Yeah. Well, that was kind of all of the uh, design and story stuff that I have right now. But I did want to show kind of what happens in the next step. And this is what I'm working on right now. Uh, well, I'm actually working on all these things right now, kind of at the same time. Um, but I'm also going to go ahead and let me uh, pull up After Effects. Uh, which is, hold on. right here. Okay, so what I did then was to go through and take some of those initial story ideas, clean some of the stuff up in Photoshop, break it into elements, and then pull it into After Effects, which is how I usually tend to work to make my story reels, um, or my animatics as we often call them. So the idea here now is to start playing with timing and see how long does it take to do you know, this intro the way we had it. And also, as you're working through these things, other story issues come up. And I want to show you an example of this right now. So um, initially, uh, I'm, going to go, I'm going to go ahead and just play, let me go ahead and play this version. And then uh, it should play okay through here. We'll see. So we've got this sign. It's going to be a breeze. It gets pulled off. Now we're looking at the reverse of the sign. Here comes boxers and briefs. And they look up, oh, the underwear store, grand opening. And then we come down and we pull back. And they're standing there with their butts hanging out because they don't have any underwear on or any pants. And that's one of the first gags that we have is that, so let me back up just a little bit. And we talked about like when this, so let's start with the sign. So we have this sign. Um, and again, with the UPA stylings, and I'll, I'll pull up more examples of this later on, uh, or maybe next time, you would have one major element. And this is the one element we need to make sure people are paying attention to. And that's the buy one, get one sign with a balloon. So this first shot is only gonna have this in any kind of detail. There may be some stray lines or some blocks of color back behind here represented by this dark gray, which is basically the store. But we don't want people focusing on the store. We want them focusing on this sign. So it's all about the sign. So it's gonna be blowing in the wind and then it peels off. And now we're reverse on this. Now, something is very different with this. If you remember back to the storyboard images um, that I showed you, we were on the opposite side of the bus. I'm going to show you an example of this here in a second. Um, the reason we went with this is pretty simple. Uh, this is not necessarily by normal, normal practices good composition because we have this sign blocking the door. It's blocking our characters. But it's very purposeful in this case because what it's doing is hiding the fact that these characters have no pants on. So when they get off the bus, you're not going to see that they have no pants or no underwear. And they come right up, the sign's still kind of blocking them. And it's all about focusing on their faces. And they look up, and then we cut to this shot. So this was actually an alt version, because the initial version I did um, was very much what I had drawn out in my storyboards initially. And it looks something like this, where we still start on this sign. 
And then the second shot we cut to was a wider shot where we'd have a bus, uh, kind of like a bus stop right here, and we'd have a park bench, and there's a trash can, a little bus stop sign. This is the sign that we were just looking at. What I did like about this was you could see the balloon kind of pulling away the, uh, the buy one part of the sign off in the distance just as the bus pulls up. But there's a few problems with this. First problem is that we can't see the characters, right? We're on the opposite side of the bus. The bus is going to be dropping characters off on the other side. So here maybe we can see the bus driver. Maybe we see some shadows of people moving. We could still hear people inside basically saying, get off the bus, get off the bus. Because again, everyone on the bus knows they don't have pants on. But the joke, read if this was to continue, imagine that the bus kind of cleared out of the way. Boxers and briefs would be left standing right here running back towards the sign. Right off the bat, it gives away the fact that they have no pants on. And I didn't think that that was successful because that's it's a nice little gag, but it's not the first thing you want people to think about with these characters, right? So by flipping the bus and by going back around this side, it makes the bus less important. The bus doesn't become a major character. It can still pull up. We can still hear what's going on. We can see the characters get off the bus, but it's all about these characters and their excitement to run up to this sign that they're there. Um, and like Sean was talking about earlier, it saves us time. Uh, basically, the, the setup gets shortened because it's not about the bus, and then we got to do this, and we got to do that. They get off the bus. They run right up to the sign. The sign's serving its purpose. And then we get this, what I think is a funnier reveal of we're at the store, and we pull back. Oh, yeah, and by the way, here's everything else. And then the last thing people are going to get is, oh, my gosh, they have no pants on. And that's the reaction that I think we wanted. Um, so that that's kind of again when you're working through things. Every there, there's num any unlimited way number of ways we could do this stuff and and stage kind of these shots, um, but in this case there's specific moments where we want to get a laugh or we want to have this gag pay off. Here I think it's hilarious that you pull back and you see them and it's like yeah 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 and you're like oh my gosh what are they doing, right? Um, and anyways from there it would move forward and then we cut back around and it what it also adds to their character because they seem so oblivious to the fact that they have no pants on, right? They're not even giving a second thought to it. And to me, that plays into more what the character is or what the characters are, I should say. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. you have anything to add to that, Sean, or kind of? No, I think that's uh, that's great to uh, see that process and the thought process behind uh, kind of where you uh, came for that story. Um, so, yeah, so Todd was, uh, this, this story uh, is really all Todd, uh, for this one, for the most part. And I think it gets us in really fast, you know. Again, looking at the way we had it set up before where, you know, characters are walking from different directions up the street. There's a lot of setup. This one this one is right into it within, you know, five seconds or something like that. So Yeah, I mean, what's great about this one, I think, is that literally from the point we get up to the sign and right there, is, this is basically where this where it starts, right? Where we see the sign and they're happy and then the choice is going to come up but we're no more than 16 seconds in before they're going to start to realize the sign is there and they have to pick one and then we're on to the gags so i think we're well on our way to one minute you know runtime on this yeah and i'm going to be showing in future episodes how i go about the actual making of things like this like the way i break down my elements and put them together um it's too much to go into for today, but I'll be doing an entire talk just on how to structure this and also for the other show that we're doing, which is way more complex um, in terms of the setups for the animatic and story reel for King's Aces that I'm creating. So um, much, much more on this. I think it's a fun process. It's completely open. You can do whatever you want within it, um, but I'm excited to, uh, to show you guys how I approach this uh, in the coming weeks. Yeah, let me uh, transition. There we go. <clears throat> I'm back now. There we are. There are our faces. Yay! Um, Hide them. <laughs> so, so yeah. So next week is uh, today. This week was uh, Todd time. Next week is it was is all me. Uh, so I'll be doing. I'll be building a rig for one of these characters. Uh, I don't know which one uh, as of yet, but I'll be building it in harmony, or at least the first steps of it. Uh, probably won't be able to get through all of it. I'm sure, but you can you can you can watch me do it uh so we'll live stream that it'll be it'll be all me uh at least the first steps of it creating probably uh the pieces of the character and how they i'll talk about it when we get in there but you kind of have to build them piece by piece 
uh, so that you can move those pieces around and animate them. Uh, but that's what we've got coming up, at least for next week. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I'd say for our, for our tens of viewers, uh, if you would like to leave comments about things that you either thought were interesting from today's stuff, or if there's stuff that we showed that, hey, I'd like to see more of, I would say that in the coming weeks, we've got a lot more planned. Like we mentioned way back at the beginning of this, um, Sean showing rig stuff, me showing some background stuff. Some of it might be recorded um, and just kind of you know sped up, something like that. Some might be streamed live and you guys can comment on and ask questions. Um, but if there's things that you're interested in or things that you would like to see, make sure you let us know. Yeah, uh, and one of my huge, uh, huge goals is a comment from a viewer during the stream. That's the goal. Can we get that done in the next... We're not going to get it done by the end of February because this is the last stream of February. Can we get it in March? Can we get that one comment? You guys can just... Just one. Just one. One live comment. One live comment. We're setting the bar high. Well, it's higher than it is now. Cause Only... <laughs> <laughs> the bar is zero right now, and that's what we're at. Alrighty, I think that's it. Yep. Until next week, Tuesday at 10. See you then. Subscribe. Subscribe, like. See you All later. Right, guys. Bye. <laughs>